the Indian government can do whatever they want. So they've lived this a generation. And then so many other um, laws like the restricted area permit, they cannot freely come and go. The Indian government watches who comes in and they definitely watch who goes out because they don't want the world to know. Things have changed a, a little bit. I'm happy about smartphones and Nagas are actually able to have a smartphone so they can use multimedia, social media to get the word out. But prior to that, when I was helping the Nagas since 2003, they had just had internet cafes and those internet cafes were all owned by Indian people. So they were afraid to use those. They also had options to travel abroad to like places like Bangkok where they're guests of the Bangkok government and so is India. But they also were policing the Nagas. It happened to me. I went there and somehow the Indian government found out that I was there and they sent the police to my hotel. I was out shopping, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. but. Um, it was very upsetting to me, and so I went to the U.S. consulate. The U.S. consulate's law is unless I'm in physical danger, I thought I was in danger because I was psychologically in danger, and, um, but basically the law is unless I'm physically in harm's way. So I said, basically, I'm a sitting duck, and they said, if you feel like you're in a physical danger, you need to go back home. And so the way they helped me was they made me call every at 10 a.m. every morning and they would check to see how I was feeling. Was I feeling in threat? Were there any more threats? Um, and they ended up coming to meet me outside of the U.S. consulate and they said this was one of the gravest things that they saw because I was an American. The Nagas were a guest of the priest talks in Thailand. Um, the Indian government was also there as guest of Thailand. So how could a guest threaten me by going to the police? And so it became kind of an international situation. But that just showed that while well, I've been harassed in America that I could go to another place for peace talks and yet be harassed. So even myself over the years have had threats. When I had my event in Congress, um, they slashed my tires. I almost didn't make it. There was another situation that's very serious, but I can't prove anything. Um, when I had my first event in Congress, they, um, the British, uh, the Indian government called the congressman to try to shut down my event. Five days in a row, five times a day, they said. But the congressman stood by me, Congressman uh, Dan Burton. He is very well aware of the atrocities in India. So he stood by me and it was able to go ahead. But what was weird was my webmaster had posted on the internet every single thing that I was supposed to do that day, like pick up the truck, have this dog smell underneath the truck, that's part of security at um, the US government, and then go to the loading dock to unload my exhibit and uh, what time the program started. Well, he, by mistake, wrote the day before. And it was very strange that exactly at the time of the loading dock, someone shot into the loading dock. And we'll never know. I did tell the FBI, because that was written on our, our agenda that we were going to be unloading our products at 10 a.m. And that's exactly when someone 
shot into the loading dock and everything was shut. The whole Rayburn building was shut down for a whole day. And so we were all just laughing. We were saying, wow, thank God our event was the next day, not knowing that my webmaster had posted the previous day. So I'll never know who that was for, but since there was so much animosity by the Indian Embassy to shut my event down, I'm starting to put two and two together that that could have been a warning for us to shoot to stop our event. Mm -hmm. So weird things like that, I would get calls from Indian press and they would misquote me. They would take whatever I say. For instance, it was so one Indian uh, journalist said, so you know that Nagaland is part of India. I said, yes, but the Nagas were never part of the Indian government by conquest or concession. They printed only yes, I know. They didn't say that it was not a, my other part. So these were the misinformations that they would cut and paste without letting me tell the other side of the story. So I applaud you for having this documentary that you're trying to hear the whole story. And I think many people have half stories.